Well, come on and let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? Welcome back to another edition of Florida State Simicast. Should he stay or should he go? Jimbo Fisher rumors are cranked back up again, but this time I think there's actually some legitimacy behind them. In years past, you heard about Auburn. Of course, last year, you heard about LSU. But now you're hearing more than just LSU's interested and Jimbo's, you know, mum's the word. Now it's LSU's people have contacted Jimbo's people. It's rumored that Jimbo would accept the job if the money is correct. So, it seems a little more like a possibility. How high of a possibility? Not sure. I might just put it at 50-50. But let's say he does leave for LSU. Number one, Jimbo, in my opinion, is still one of the top coaches in the country, despite this disappointing season. Number two, I think a thank you has to be given to him if he does leave. Number one, thank you for bringing this program into the 21st century. By that I mean changing the practice habits, just building in the program in a way that is necessary to be successful in modern day football. You know, the way you recruit um, a sports psychologist, the, the GPS monitoring, monitoring system, all those things helped modernize FSU to the 21st century because quite frankly, it was archaic at the end of the Bowden era. Old practice habits, uh, whether it's, you know, tackling every day, uh, the way they recruited, types of players they recruited back then, you know, the smallish linemen, blah, 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 blah. So thank you for bringing this program up to speed. Uh, number two, which is probably number one, thank you for the 2013 National Championship. That season was incredible. I'll never forget it. Uh, I've been alive and have seen all three of the four states national championships in that by far. And, of course, recency bias helps for me to remember every single game. But it was by far the most enjoyable. I mean, just annihilated everybody, of course, except for the title game. But the title game at least gave FSU fans something they hadn't seen all year, which is a heart, you know, a heart attack, a, uh, you know, a last second thriller. So even when they won the title, it was, you know, we got a taste of that as well as a, a taste of the close game. Uh, just just a dominant team with all those draft picks. I believe it was 20 out of 24 starters, if you include the kicker and the punter, were drafted. Just So thank you for that team. And finally, thanks for leaving this program in better shape than you found it. Now, whichever coach comes in, if he does leave, will have an indoor practice facility, renovated locker rooms, brand new player dorms, stadium renovations. All those things were made possible, due, by and large, due to Jimbo's efforts. Number one, of course, it helps that he won a lot. Number two, he's a great salesman. And since day one, since he took over, he was like, look, I know Bowden was asking you guys about this and that and this, but no, we really need to get this stuff if you want FSU football to return to glory. Because you have many of these big-time schools like Michigan or a lot, a lot of the top SEC schools. We have to keep up with those Joneses. Alabama has a freaking waterfall in their locker room for crying out loud. So thank you for leaving this program in much better shape. And not just with those amenities, but of course, the players he could potentially leave behind. There is still a ton of talent on this team going into next year. So whatever coach is chosen, it's going to have a lot to work with all the way around. Anyway, anyway, slice it, whether it's the players, the program, the amenities, everything's in place for the next guy to be very successful. Who do I want that guy to be? Well, I'm going to go with Tom Herman. I know he's, a, he's the popular choice, obviously. And, and that's not the only reason. There's probably other guys that I haven't heard of that are good coaches that, that, it, that are out there right now. But he, regardless of whether he's just the popular pick, and that's why I, I'm bringing him up or not, is he checks all the boxes for me. Now, this is in no particular order, but these are kind of like my priorities for a head coach, for Florida State's head coach. You got to be young, and I think Herman's like, 41 or something like that early 40s you have to be an excellent recruiter from what i hear he is he's got i mean uh, i've seen pictures of him with a grill in his mouth you have to uh run a dynamic offense preferably up tempo spread not that i mind jimbo's offense i i'm a kind of a pro pro style offense snob and or have been 
But if you don't have the right pieces in place, that's hard to run efficiently every single year, year in and year out. So I would love to see a more modern, a more college type offense that might be a little easier for, for these kids to run. Not to mention, I've always wondered what a up-tempo offense would look like with FSU's athletes. Because, you know, some schools, many schools in the past that have ran that type of offense were schools that had to do it out of necessity. They couldn't just line up and knock you around, so they had to spread, it, spread you out and do some up-tempo and do that stuff. Well, of course, now there's big-time programs that have begun to do that. Urban started it a while ago at, at UF. Uh, and there's others that have since done that. But I always wonder what FSU athletes would look like in that system. Okay? So that's, a, that's another box checked. Recruits, young, dynamic offense. Uh, he has to have prior head coaching experience. That's another box. He does, obviously. And the last box, which is not as important, but it's nice when they come from some kind of coaching tree. And he comes from Urban Meyer's coaching tree. Now, Urban Meyer, I'm not a huge fan of as a person, but we all know he's one of the best coaches not named Nick Saban. Or he is the best coach not named Nick Saban. So I'd be all over Herman. So who are the other candidates? I don't know. Uh, I've heard Fedora's name, which I'm not a huge fan of. I've heard uh, Patterson at TCU. Um, I'm sure there's some others I'm not thinking of. But I think FSU could have their pick of the litter. They would have challenges from some other big schools if they get vacancies. But if they pony up the dough, I think they offer what almost any school offers as far as a great chance to win at a high level. And hey, maybe an easier path to the to the to the college football playoff, uh, playing in the ACC. Although <laughs> the Atlantic Division that FSU plays in, you know, you got Clemson and Louisville now, so it's not exactly a cakewalk like it might have been just a few years back. But anyways, that's it. We'll see if Jimbo leaves. We'll find out. I mean, next month. I mean, December is usually when uh, coaching changes, coaching uh, hirings uh, happen. So we'll find out soon enough. I'll be fine if he stays. I, I'm still 100% behind him. However, you guys have heard me say before, if he does, he's got to make a lot of changes on his staff. I'm not going to go through the names again. You know who they are. And if he leaves, I'm on the Tom Herman bus big time. Big time. It doesn't guarantee that if he were to become the new coach that he's going to you know, win a bunch of titles. But like I said, he checks all the boxes for me. So I, if they went after him, I would just be 100% behind that. All right, well, this is it. That's all. Thank you for listening. First time visitor, please feel free to subscribe. This has been another Florida State Semicast. I'm out.